All right, so this is Rogers Communications Q4 2021, I believe is their um, fiscal year. Um, really good quarter. Uh, they beat on profit, missed on revenue, um, but everything looking good. They actually added 200%, uh, 66,000 uh, net wireless subscribers. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, they did talk uh, about um, the acquisition uh, that's going on with Shaw. Uh, supposedly, it's still going to happen. I believe they said the uh, first half of 2022 um, is when they expect it to close. They've, they've received approval from, I believe, two of the four uh, Canadian uh, governing bodies uh, that's part of this. And so uh, they're looking at uh, getting the last two done, and then they'll be good to go. They also mentioned uh, having the financing already secured uh, as far as getting that done. The only thing that they said that may come into play is having to sell off some assets in order to get the deal done. But uh, they're expecting that uh, to happen this year. Uh, so that's really good. I am a little worried uh, if the deal does not go through. I think uh, the acquisition has already been priced into the stock. And so uh, we can really see the stock take a, a real fall uh, if that does happen. Um, the stock price uh, did perform really well on the back of earnings. It shot up to like 62. It's down to around 57, 58 right now. A lot of that has to do with uh, the rest of the market. Uh, but like I said, it performed really well. I think everyone's happy about what's going on. Uh, as you can see here, uh, their wireless uh, sector of the, the business uh, increased uh, something like 6%. Looking at the cable results, uh, look like they're flat, didn't lose anything, didn't really gain much. Um, and the, there we go, and the media uh, results uh, does not look good at all. Uh, and, you know, as you can see, the revenue is up, uh, you know, sports are happening again. They're getting fans back into the stadiums. Um, but they mentioned uh, having to spend uh, quite a bit of money on the Toronto Blue Jays uh, roster as far as uh, contracts go. Um, if you follow me, then you know that uh, one of the cool thing about Rogers Communications is that they own, uh, outright the Toronto Blue Jays, and they are co-owners uh, in the other Canadian sports teams. So that makes this a really uh, different and really exciting uh, telecommunications company to own. I'm not sure if any of the other telecoms own any uh, sports franchises. And so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what that looks like today. Um, what is this I queued up? Uh, okay, that's not this. Um, so this is the value for the Toronto Blue Jays. As you can see, uh, the value has uh, consistently increased over the last, uh, looks like 20 years. Now, I can't say anything really to, uh, you know, the accuracy of these numbers, but, you know, it's a, it's a decent source. And, um, you know, sports teams is a, a pretty good business to be in. And so the idea that this company owns uh, these sports franchises means that if they wanted to at any point in time, uh, they can sell these things at a really nice profit. Uh, this one is the Toronto Raptors, uh, which they're co-owners in. And as you can see, uh, the value of this franchise has really shot up over the years. And I believe they're in the playoffs right now. So uh, doing fairly well here. And then the third is the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, hockey team. Uh, again, consistent uh, growth uh, for the franchise. And so, you know, we think that's going to continue. Um, and, you know, when we see these asset prices continue to rise, that's gonna do nothing but increase uh, the asset uh, side of the balance sheet for the company. Um, also pulled, just you know, trying to figure out what these teams are. I know a bit about the Toronto Raptors, but I don't know anything about the other teams. So I grabbed a little information here. Um, again, I can't say anything to the, the efficacy or accuracy of any of these statements, but, um, it does say here that uh, they sell out most games and they have one of the most expensive tickets uh, uh, in the country. Uh, well, in the in North America, rather, um, uh, as far as NBA teams go. And then here. All right. So this is the MLB. As you can see, uh, New York Yankees at the very top, followed by Boston Red Sox, uh, Cubs, Dodgers. Um, and we have Toronto Blue Jays uh, down here. But keep in mind, this is a uh, top what top 10, top 12 out of something like 30 teams. Uh, so I think that's really good. And, and this, again, just talks about, you know, how many fans they have, how excited the fans are about the game. So I'm not sure how this is calculated, but it looks 
about right, especially being that you have the Yankees and the Red Sox uh, there at the top. Uh, looking at the NHL, uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, again, this is out of roughly uh, 30 teams. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs uh, come in at number seven. So, again, uh, really good sports franchises. Uh, you can kind of see the rest of these guys down here at the bottom. And I think what's important to mention here is also just the number of fans, right? So you see Toronto Maple Leafs at 1.3, and then very quickly we drop off to like half of that. So, again, really good sports franchises. Um, I really like where the company is going. Uh, they did talk about 10G, uh, which is something that they're already thinking about and already starting to roll out, which is uh, going to give Internet speeds of up to 8 gigs a minute, which is a crazy uh, number. Um, you know, anytime I see one gig uh, per minute, I get excited uh, for, for video and things of that nature. So, you know, to talk about eight gigs uh, coming through the, the, the wire line and fiber octet is, uh, is really something amazing. Uh, nothing that's going to get rolled out immediately, but something that they're already working on and, uh, and looking to roll out uh, shortly. Um, the only other thing I want to touch on uh, was they, they did talk about uh, inflation and uh, how that's uh, uh, touching uh, the company, uh, they are uh, having to pay more for labor, uh, which is the case, I think, across the board in almost every industry. So nothing really there. Um, as far as the telecommunications sector, uh, we know that they've uh, done really well. And so I think we continue to, 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 to see this uh, uh, continue, right, uh, continue to rise, rather, as, as far as, you know, adding more people, as far as bringing in more revenue. Um, the other thing that they talked about was, how inflation and uh, that sort of thing is really not touching them, especially with the fact that they are bringing on uh, Shaw Communications, which is going to make them just a huge, huge company. And so all of their vendors and the people that they work with and the people that they pay for things, um, they're going to really be able to, to push and basically get whatever price they want for whatever it is that they're buying uh, just because they're such a large company and those vendors rely on those uh, large companies uh, really for, for the bulk of their income in a lot of situations. So, um, again, they look like they're in a really good spot. Uh, travel is picking up in Canada, and so uh, that's going to mean more roaming revenue. Right now, they're at 90 percent of pre-pandemic uh, roaming revenue. So I think we're good there. Um, you know, they're still spending money uh, getting um, the rural uh, side of Canada connected. They're doing that more with the wireless uh, hotspot. They're calling fixed wireless, which is a, a really weird uh, uh, word. But um, I think for a lot of people in rural areas, that's just facts of life. You know, you're just not going to get fiber optic or, or cable out there, and so um, you're going to have to have that fixed wireless uh, deal um, to run the internet at home. Um, yeah, nothing else to really talk about. I, I do, I do wish that they they spoke more to uh, their sports franchises. They didn't say anything other than the fact that, you know, they're bringing in a little bit more money this year uh, because you know programming is back and we're getting fans back in the seats and stuff like that. But um, I wanted to highlight it because I think it is such an integral part of this company and something that uh, really makes them exciting for investors.